Welcome back to my channel. On this video, I'm going to be sharing my February debrief. And uh, I ended up reading once again, like January, 22 books in the month of February. It was a bit of a sprint at the end. <laughs> once I realized I was close to 22 books, I was really pushing for that because I thought it would be fun to continue this uh, kind of goal of having 22 books every month in the year of 2022. We'll see if I can actually keep this up. Um, but it was fun. So once I got to the end and I knew that I was close, I went ahead and just sprinted to get in my 22 books. So in this video, I'm going to share about each of those books and I'm going to share in the order in which I read them. So I'm kind of referring to my Goodreads profile so that I can take a look and see what I read and in what order. So um, the first book that I read in the month was The Children of Men by P.D. James. And I actually had a chance to listen to this on audio. Um, I think I was drawn to this book in part because I know there was a, a movie adaptation to it, but I didn't really know much of the story. And the general premise of this book, The Children of Men, is that you have a kind of post-apocalyptic society where women are no longer able to have children. Um, and so basically the society of humans is dying out across the world. And it causes all kinds of, uh, like triggers all kinds of things happening across the world in different countries. Um, and there are also kind of different factions of people based on when they were born um, that are being uh, utilized in different ways. For example, to take care of the elderly of the society, because as people are dying out, um, the culture of humanity is basically also dying out. And I don't think it is giving away a spoiler because this is a pretty big plot point in the book that eventually um, there is a woman who is pregnant. Uh, in the book. And so if you know anything about the film, this is a big focus of the film, not as much of a focus of the book. Um, so this is a relatively short book. I think it's under 250 pages. Um, it went by very quickly. And I haven't read a lot of P.D. James outside of her mysteries. And so this is part of why I wanted to pick it up because it's kind of a futuristic sci-fi kind of book. And I, I guess I wasn't expecting it to be as kind of socio-political as it was, just going into it, not really knowing much about it. Um, but I did enjoy it. I thought there was definitely some world building happening in this book, which is a theme for a lot of the books that I'm reading right now that are more in the sci-fi fantasy realm. And it's not necessarily something I see in other things that I'm reading. So that was really interesting as well. So that was uh, Children of Men by P.D. James. After that, I read uh, two books in a row by Louise Penny, the second and third in her um, Gamage series. The first one was A Fatal Grace. And then I followed that up with The Cruelest Month. Um, a Fatal Grace is a story that kind of continues in the world of um, the Gamage series where you have a, a woman who is not well liked in the community and she uh, is killed and, and she's kind of the center of this story. She has a daughter and a husband. Um, the daughter is kind of traumatized um, and, and we're not quite sure what's going on there other than the the mother who's the woman who was killed was kind of verbally abusive to the daughter. Um, and the community is kind of rallying around, you know, this family to try to understand what happened um, to this woman. And lots of layers here in terms of just learning about more members of this small town of Three Pines, which comes uh, is the setting of the first book in the, the entire series. Um, really enjoyed it. You get a deeper view of what's going on with the police officers in this book as well a really solid contribution to the series. And then the third book, The Cruelest Month, takes place outside of Three Pines at a local kind of um, hotel or retreat where um, two of the Three Pines uh, characters, a couple, are there for like a family reunion and someone is killed at the family reunion. Um, and then Gamage happens to be there also on vacation um, and is solving this crime of what happened. This one also gives like a really insider view into the family of a couple of these characters that we've seen show up in the first couple of books. Um, and the, the mysteries are always interesting. There's always some kind of layer there that's really intriguing and it's hard to kind of figure out, you know, uh, before you actually get the reveal, you know, who the killer is in these stories. Um, so I'm really enjoying this series. I'm hoping to pick up another one in my March reads um, and we'll continue this throughout the year. I believe there's 17 books in the series total, so I stacked a couple into this month uh, to make sure that I was making progress in the series moving forward. Um, all right, the next book um, that I am going to talk about is called Silence um, in the Age of Noise 
by Erling Kage or Kage. I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce the name. It is Scandinavian. Um, and I actually ended up reading three books by this author in this month. And um, the first one was on silence. The second one was called Philosophy for Polar Explorers. And the third one is called Walking One Step at a Time. And the author is actually a polar explorer. He has walked to the South Pole. He has walked to the North Pole. He's also climbed Everest. And um, he actually was good friends with some of the climbers who were featured in the book and then the follow-up film Into Thin Air. If you're familiar with that storyline, he actually references them in one of these books. Um, and so he's a, a well-known kind of explorer and has these really interesting kind of philosophical and reflective um, books on the concept of silence, the concept of walking, and then just like philo philosophy in general for like being an adventurer, which I found to be just really interesting um, in terms of what he is focusing on, you know, in his own writing now that he isn't kind of full-time exploring in the way that he was kind of earlier in his life when he was younger. I loved these books. They're relatively short, you know, really quick reads. And I, I had like stumbled across them picked them up at the library, um, happened to have all three available. And I read them basically one after another. Like I just found them really fascinating. And I think that his story and his life is really interesting because he's done all these things that I just have no uh, awareness of like, you know, walking to the South Pole, walking to the North Pole, climbing Everest, like hearing his perspectives was really interesting. Okay, so now I'm just realizing and I'm just gonna be honest <laughs> on this video. So I actually read three books in the Gamage series. And the one that I described that was taking place at the retreat is actually one called A Rule Against Murder. I've mixed these up in my mind. The Cruelest Month is actually a different book in the series. So A Rule Against Murder is book number four, um, which I read after I read these uh, other books, Silence, Walking, and Philosophy for, for Polar Explorers. So um, The Cruelest Month is actually about um, a seance that happens in the town of Three Pines. Um, and you can see how I'm juggling all the books in my head and not being able to remember them. So there's a seance, um, someone is killed in the seance, and then they do kind of a, um, a, a obviously solving the mystery of why and, and the, the behind the scenes of why someone was killed. It actually goes back into kind of the history of Three Pines a little bit, and you actually get that a little bit more in um, a, a, a Fatal Grace as well. Like there's a lot of kind of back and forth with the history of the characters, what brought them to Three Pines, um, and as you can imagine, the books, if you're reading them back to back, like I am, they do tend to run together a little bit because they're all the same characters. I mean, there's a different mystery in the setting, but there is so much ambiance in the town itself. And you're seeing all of these recurring characters come up again and again. I think it is relatively easy to mix up the books in the order in which they happen. So I'll just say that because I just did it. Um, but that was another book that I read this month was the fourth book in the Gamage series called A Rule Against Murder. Okay, the next book that I read was one of the books that I had picked out um, for my alphabet challenge. The, my letter was F for the month of February. And uh, I picked out a book called The Feather Thief, Beauty, Obsession, and the Natural History Heist of the Century. And this is a, a true crime book about a man who breaks into a natural history museum and steals a bunch of rare birds um, and feathers because he's kind of obsessed with fly tying um, for fly fishing. And it tells the story of this man, his childhood, and what led him to this heist and, and why he kind of engaged in it. And then it goes through the trial and he has um, a defense, which I don't really want to give away. I'm not sure. It could be a spoiler, but he has this defense that's kind of interesting. And we're not really sure at the end of the book if the defense was legit or not, um, or if he was lying, like if he was telling the truth or he was lying about this, this defense that he had. I had heard about this book from a podcast that I listened to and they loved it. They thought it was so phenomenal and I've heard really great things about it. I also found this book incredibly fascinating. I do own it on ebook, but I was able to find it on audio. And so I listened to it on audio, really enjoyed it. I would say if you want a true crime book that doesn't have um, like violence in it, if you're interested in that kind of true crime, this is really interesting. Like the story is interesting and you definitely learn a lot about areas that maybe you wouldn't have known anything about, um, like fly fishing, for example. And also just the, the way that they go about solving this crime is also pretty interesting as well. So um, the author for that is Kirk Wallace Johnson. 
After that, I read uh, Matt Haig's The Comfort Book, um, which Matt Haig has written several nonfiction books. He's also written some fiction books. I am most familiar with his nonfiction books because they focus on kind of mental health and his story of um, being diagnosed with a pretty severe depression, I think when he was in his 20s. Um, and so this is a book where he's basically talking about words of comfort. You know, if you if you are going through a difficult time or a difficult period, it's like very short essays where he talks to you about um, like comforting concepts and um, how to have like hope in dark times. I had like stumbled across this. This is one of his more recent books and grabbed it from the library. I also really enjoyed it. A pretty quick read, um, but one that's really full of like wisdom and um, and positivity, which I thought was really wonderful. Uh, the next book that I read was Jenny Bayliss's A Season for Second Chances. This is a book that I saw kind of floating around during the holiday season and wanted to pick it up. It does take place um, in kind of the winter time. Um, and it's basically about a woman who ends a very lengthy marriage of, you know, 25 plus years. She has a couple of kids um, and she uh, ends the marriage and moves into this like house sitting kind of situation in a small town that is not her her town that she is normally living in. And then of course, builds a bunch of relationships within that town, ends up opening a small business in that town um, and and forming you know new relationships over time. Um, I really enjoyed this book. I did listen to it on audio uh, in addition to having a, a hard copy from the library. So I kind of switched back and forth. And um, I really thought that it was a, uh, solid story in terms of just like character development uh, but also I, I always enjoy a story where there's kind of a small town and there's quirky characters um, and this definitely had you know some of both. Uh, this is definitely a romance because she is she is meeting someone after the marriage is over um, but I appreciated kind of how that built over time um, and it was a it was a cute read. I mean, I, I don't know what to say much more than that. Like it was uh, definitely something that I could recommend and, and enjoyed, um, but falling into kind of the um, seasonal romance, if that's something that you're interested in. Okay, the next book that I read is A History of Wild Places by Shay Earnshaw. And uh, also read this one on audio and I really enjoyed it. I mean, it's, it's basically a mystery novel, but it has kind of this, um, it's hard to describe it this I don't want to give away any spoilers but like there's kind of a twist that comes at it that you're just you're really not expecting in terms of of why you know this this uh, situation is the way that it is so the the basic premise is there is a community of people who live in kind of a commune and um, there's a woman who goes missing and then a man goes to find her and then he also goes missing and then there are people living in this commune that come to understand that there are these missing people and they're trying to figure out what's going on and the commune is basically, um, they believe that there is some kind of illness that they can't leave where they are. They're like living in the woods. And so um, they can't leave where they are or they will become sick. It reminded me a little bit of The Village, if you're familiar with that film, like the premise of The Village, which is basically like a very contained community because of some kind of dangerous, you know, or fearful thing that is outside of their community. And um, so the story kind of unwinds from there in terms of um, under you eventually come to understand like what where these missing people went and, and what their relationship is to this community. Um, and it's uh, I, I was turning the pages. I mean, I, I was really sucked into the audio um, and I really appreciated kind of the story. I want to say I listened to this probably in a day. Um, I think I, I listened to it straight through because I was really kind of enthralled by what was going on. Um, okay, so the next book that I read was Interview with the Vampire, which is the first book in the Vampire Chronicles by Anne Rice. And I picked up this book because Anne Rice recently died and I had never read her work before. And um, I knew that this has been made into a movie adaptation, that it's a very popular series, and I just didn't have much awareness of, of what it was about. And I think I saw the film years and years and years ago, but really couldn't remember anything about the plot. So I picked this up, I listened to it on audio, um, and I have to say, I can understand why it has such a broad audience. Like, I think that this was really the first of the vampire books. If you think about kind of the Twilight series and other things that came after, there was a lot that this book sets up in terms of world building around vampires. 
Um, but I would also say that this was just not a book for me. Like this is not, I, I wanted to read it just to get a taste of what the series was like, but it was not a series I would continue. Um, I think the world building of this particular, um, like just vampires in general, like it's not necessarily of interest to me as it is to other people, but the book itself was well done. I mean, the, the plotting of it, the character development, um, the direction that it takes, the world building, I mean, it's all good quality. Um, but in the end, it just wasn't really for me. And so I finished it, um, but I, I probably wouldn't pick up another book in this series. Okay, so then after that, I read The Stand by Stephen King. This was my like my, my big book of the month, the behemoth that I was trying to get through. Um, it, it's over a thousand pages long. I mean, it's, it's just this incredibly lengthy story, also about um, kind of a plague situation where um, a, a majority of the, the humans on earth have died um, from this plague. And you understand from the very beginning of the book where the plague came from. And it follows the story of basically the plague being released in the world and then what happens after that. Now, um, if you are familiar at all with Stephen King and kind of his concept of, of horror books, there is a kind of evil character in this book that is, um, paranormal and that this person like shows up in people's dreams and um, is is causing nightmares. And then there's a, a more kind of um, uh, angel character or, or positive character that is um, kind of the opposite of this evil character. And they're kind of kind of coming toward a battle towards the end of this book. Um, I actually really enjoyed this. I listened to it on audio. I also had the hard copy and I had the ebook for this. I, I have it in all different formats. I did find it helpful when I was listening to the audio to also be reading the book because there's a lot of characters and there's a lot of back and forth in the chapters, especially in the beginning of the book when different people are getting sick and then eventually the people who are surviving are, are coming together into a community. And so like to see where they're all coming from and then have them come into this community, it's a lot to kind of um, juggle in terms of your, your own awareness of like what's going on in the story. I didn't think it was um, like overly complex though, in terms of like not being able to understand what's going on. And the plot itself is very compelling. I mean, like you, you're not really bored at any point in this book. And you would think that for that many pages, you know, part of the reason I wanted to read this was like, how does he do that? How does he write a book of this length that is um, compelling and that you, you want to keep reading? And what I found was I liked the diversity of the characters and like the, the a way that he eventually kind of brings them together in a community and then where, where the book goes from there. And there's also a little bit of just like, how is this all going to resolve? Because you have this evil character and you're not entirely sure kind of what the end game is between him and the, the more kind of, if you have like devil and one side angel on the other, like what, what's going to happen with these two characters. Um, so I, I think the book actually holds up pretty well. It was written in 1978. There was definitely some uh, comments at the end of the book that were very um, kind of salient to what we're dealing with now with COVID and the pandemic. And it, that surprised me a little bit that it was like he was so spot on with some of the kinds of things that I think are, are part of the kind of present moment. The other thing that I really thought was interesting about this book is there is an earlier version of it apparently where he was asked to remove like hundreds of pages and so this is the book where he like puts it all back. Um, this is the version where he adds in, you know, a lot more detail. And um, it, I can see why. I can see why you needed all the detail to really flesh out what was going on. And I can't really imagine the book shorter than it is. Um, so I find that really interesting too, just from kind of an artistic perspective. So um, I, I don't think I have seen any of the adaptations of this. I think there's at least two adaptations of the stand. Um, I don't know that I need to see them just because I felt like the book was really um, satisfying in terms of, of the plot and the story, um, but wouldn't mind kind of keeping an eye out for those in the future. Uh, okay, the next book that I read was by John Scalzi. It's called Lock In and definitely a theme of my reading in that this is another book about kind of a pandemic or a plague. Um, and in this book, um, the illness causes a, what is called a lock in syndrome, which is basically some people when they have this illness they are still kind of cognitively present but their bodies are no longer working and so you have this kind of race of people or or subset of humanity 
who are um, basically immobilized in their own bodies, but they can put their consciousness, and this is kind of through the science that evolves in the book, they can put their consciousness into a robot. And so they are operating within the world kind of fully, you know, um, uh, cognizant of what's going on, but they don't have their actual body. They have the body of a robot. And, uh, and there's all kinds of, uh, kind of challenges that come up from this in terms of like, where do you live? How do you charge your robot? You know, not everybody can afford a really good quality, you know, robot and all of this. And one of the main characters in the book is one of these people who has lock-in. He's an FBI agent and he is using one of these robots to get around and um, show up at different crime scenes and things like that. Um, there are also people in this world who are, are human beings who, because they got sick with this illness, something changed in their brains and they can also be utilized by people who have this lock-in syndrome, but they're not robots, they're actual people. This might be sounding a little confusing at this point. There's, there's some kind of notes in the book that actually make this more clear. Um, but basically what happens is this FBI agent who's in this robot body and a, a regular um, human who is showing up into this uh, crime scene, they get there and basically what they realize is um, somebody had um, entered into the body of someone else and, and they were kind of present when this murder took place. And so it was unclear who committed the murder. Was it the person of the original body? Was it the person who was in this other person's body? And then the, the story kind of um, goes on from there. There are a couple other books in this series that I've actually already added to my, my reading list because I found them to be really, like the story was really interesting. John Scalzi is a very prolific writer. Um, he writes in a, several different genres, um, but he's also very well known for a book called The Red Shirts, which is kind of a spoof on Star Trek. Um, and so this is an author that I was aware of, but had never read. And I'm really glad that I dug into this book. Okay, the next book that I read is another one that was on my uh, my F list uh, from my Alphabet Challenge, and it's called Forensics by Val McDermott. Now, Val McDermott is actually one of my favorite mystery writers. Um, she's written one of like my top five books that I love called The Place of Execution. And um, this book is a nonfiction book where she kind of synthesizes a lot of what she's learned that she eventually puts into her mystery novels. Like you can tell that she's done a lot of research on forensics and she actually, because she's based in, um, in Europe, I think she might be from Scotland um, originally, she tells a bunch of crimes or she uses a bunch of crimes as examples in this book that I just was not familiar with because they were coming out of the UK or they were coming out of Europe. Um, and so it's not a lot of US-based crimes, which I'm more familiar with just from reading mysteries and, and true crime. And that was kind of interesting to kind of hear. And she goes pretty far back in history for some of these crimes and really the, the birth and the origins of a lot of forensic science. Um, I really enjoyed this. I, I did listen to it on audio. I had a copy of it as well on ebook. Um, and I just found it really compelling and interesting for anybody who's kind of interested in, in crime, um, detective stories. It, it was really a, a good book to pick up. Uh, okay. So the next book on my list that I read was The Great Hunt by Robert Jordan. This is number two in the Wheel of Time series. And, um, I'm learning about world building <laughs> through reading this book, because really what I'm coming to understand is the, the genre of science fiction and fantasy, which I was not really all that aware of. Like I'm just starting to read into this more deeply um, this year in particular. World building I think is very different than a lot of the other books I've read in the past. And in particular things like mystery novels, they're set in times that are contemporary times for the most part. There are, you know, the science is relatively, you know, understood, you know, it, it's not like there are different um, races of people or different, you know, names of countries or geography. Like, I mean, everything is basically set in the, in the world as we know it. And in, uh, something like the wheel of time, that is not true. There's like a glossary in the wheel of time to help you understand all of this language that the author has created to build out this world. And what I've really found reading the wheel of time is it helps me a lot that my partner loves this series, has read it multiple times and he can kind of talk me through it. Like if I'm like, what's going on here? I don't understand this or that, or this connection, or like, what am I supposed to be understanding about this that I'm not getting? 
you know, he and I kind of talked through the book as I was reading it and he'd be like, oh, what part are you at? And then I would be able to talk to him about it. That was really helpful. I also ended up purchasing a couple of resources where people were kind of offering rereads of the Wheel of Time so that I could kind of see their interpretation of, of what they were saying was happening in the plot so that I wasn't missing anything. Um, because there's just a lot of new language and concepts and theories in this book that I, I feel like I am catching up a little bit. So um, the general premise of this book is it, it takes up where the first book left off, which is they're seeking out um, this horn that was kind of uh, stolen and they're, they're going after this to try to find it. So it is definitely kind of a, um, a, a travel book in that like the, the characters are traveling quite a bit throughout the story. There's also at one point a split off where you have kind of the male characters going in one direction and the female characters going in another direction. And you also get a bit of history about the female characters and kind of the, the magic of their existence and kind of their world because there's a specific group of women who are kind of wielding um, uh, magic and you kind of understand what the history is there. So you get a lot more about it, that in this book. Um, I'm not, I, I haven't read further, so I don't know, but according to my partner, he was like, you know, you kind of need the second book to get to the third book. And he appreciated the first book and the third book more than the second book. So I'm actually kind of curious to see where the third book goes. Um, I feel like this is very similar in some ways to Lord of the Rings trilogy, where the second book, there's just a lot of travel that's happening with the group. That's kind of what's happening here in the second book as well. So I did finish The Great Hunt uh, by Robert Jordan this month. So the next book um, I read was The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin. This is my first book by N.K. Jemisin that I've read. This is the first book in the Broken Earth trilogy. So I, I wanted to say all that about world building because I also realized something in reading this book um, of The Fifth Season, which is I, I do better when I'm reading a world building book if I can read some things about the world, like where I'm, I'm getting a bit of a synopsis of what's going on before I get into the book. Um, and I think that, I don't know if this is just because I'm not used to books that have a lot of world building. I think that's highly possible that, that some people just really enjoy it and they get immersed in the world. I tend to get confused by what's going on in the world and I have a hard time tracking with the plot. And maybe you're supposed to like let all of that kind of unveil itself over time. But what I ended up finding helpful for me um, which I never do with other genres, is I actually went to Wikipedia and looked up a plot synopsis because I was like, I'm not going to be able to follow this because of the world building. It's so different than what I'm used to. Like, I'm not going to enjoy it if I don't really understand what's going on. And what I realized was with The Wheel of Time, talking about it with my partner, that was doing that for me. I, I, that was like the equivalent of me getting a plot synopsis because I could check with him but I don't know anyone who's read this, uh, the fifth season. Like I couldn't kind of do that dialoguing with anyone. Um, and so I did end up going onto Wikipedia and just, and getting a basic understanding of like the, the world itself. And, and there's different kind of groupings of characters. There's history in this world. Um, the whole concept is that the world every like few hundred years has like a major climate event. And so there's this whole history of these different climate events that have happened. That's actually listed at the back of the book, but just getting a little sense of like what was supposed to be going on here was actually very helpful for me to kind of understand in general how to track with this book. Um, that said, I don't know that I would continue to read this trilogy. Um, I think that it was really well done. But the other thing that I realized about this as I was reading it um, is it's more literary. It's it's kind of a combination of sci-fi, fantasy, and literary, literary fiction. And right now, and partially because I'm an English major and I, I've read a lot of literary fiction, you know, in undergrad and grad school, um, I am way more in kind of using reading for entertainment and not necessarily for wanting to do like a, a, a deep level of analysis in these books. And so I appreciated that about this book, but also found it to be um, difficult for me not to get into that. And, and that didn't necessarily feel as entertaining for me in part because I want to use books for entertainment because I'm doing a lot of deep analysis at work in other areas. And so um, that was probably part of the reason why I would not pick this up again. That said, I am kind of curious what happens in the series and, and where she takes it because I think it is really well done. And I think if you like that kind of combination and you like that literary um, fiction element in there too, this would be perfect. Um, and I can see why 
this book and the two following it won the Hugo Award um, basically three years in a row because it's incredibly done. Um, but I also found it to be taking up a lot of cognitive energy for me to kind of really understand what was going on. And I don't think that's a bad thing, but for me right now in my reading journey is not exactly what I'm looking for. Okay, the next book that I read is, um, and I should also mention that was one of the F books that I picked for my alphabet challenge was the fifth season. The next book is also an F book. Finlay Donovan is killing it. This is the first in a mystery series with this character, Finlay Donovan. Um, this book was super fun. I've already recommended it to multiple people. I recommended it to my mom and to a couple of friends. Um, this book I felt was like the general premise basically is that there is a woman, she's a writer, um, she's a novelist and she writes like romantic suspense and she goes to meet her uh, editor at a Panera, um, like at the, the restaurant. And while she's at this Panera having this conversation with her editor, another woman overhears the conversation and begins to think that Finley Donovan is a contract killer, like she's a hitman or a hit woman. And uh, she hires her, like she slips her a note and basically says, will you kill my husband? And I don't want to give too much away after this, but I will just say that there are scenes of this book where I was laughing. I mean, it's, it's meant to be funny. It's meant to be kind of a humorous situation that this woman finds herself in. And she um, is constantly like trying to get herself out of a jam, basically. And it's just really interesting. Her sister also happens to be a police officer. So that kind of adds this layer of challenge to the whole situation. Um, and again, I don't want to give too much away, but it was, it's a really fun book. It reads very quickly. I will definitely be picking up the second one in the series. Okay. After that, I read my fifth F book for the month, which is Final Girls by Riley Sager. I had never read a Riley Sager before, heard really good things about Riley Sager. And this is basically a book where there are, uh, several women who are what are called final girls, if you're familiar with the trope of final girls in like a horror movie, where they're in a situation where everyone around them is killed, but they are not killed. So one of the women, for example, in this book was in a sorority house. Someone came into the sorority house, killed all of her sorority sisters, but she survived. Um, another woman was in a, a cabin. Um, everyone around her was murdered by someone, but um, she survived. And basically what happens is you have three main kind of characters um, and, and one, of the, one of these three characters who's the final girl is killed. And then we're trying to understand what happened um, to this, this woman. And then the other two final girls kind of connect with each other and are kind of supporting each other through this situation. Um, I definitely would pick up another Riley Sager. I thought it was a really interesting story. Definitely did not see where it was going in the end. So that was really interesting in terms of just like a plot twist. Um, there's several other books. This is a pretty prolific author. I've, I've collected, you know, several of the eBooks uh, that he has written. I'm looking forward to picking them up in the future. Okay, three left. <laughs> the next book that I read was uh, Layla by Colleen Hoover. And um, if you watched my uh, February video, my TBR video, I talked about how I wanted to pick up a couple of books by Colleen Hoover, because this is somebody that I see talked about a lot on Bookstagram and I've just never read her before. And in, in these couple of books, I think they, they were basically the ones that I could get my hands on. I didn't pick them for any reason other than that. Layla is kind of a paranormal, um, ghost story. Um, I don't want to again go into too many details because I think it would give away some spoilers, but basically you have a couple um, where the the woman of the couple is involved in kind of a violent incident and then after that she's not really acting like herself and we don't really understand what has happened and and the man it, throughout the story is being interviewed by someone. We don't really understand who's interviewing him, but he's like telling the story of how he met this woman and like the story of their relationship and eventually you kind of come to understand what has happened. Um, I get the sense that this is not the typical kind of story that, that Colleen Hoover writes, but I thought it was interesting. And I ended up then reading another book by her called Regretting You, which is more of like a YA young adult novel about a woman who has a husband and a daughter. Her husband is killed in an accident. And then um, her and the daughter are kind of trying to find their way without without him and their family. Like the, the father was kind of a buffer between the daughter and the mother. And then um, 
when he's gone, there's all this friction, you know, between the daughter and the mother. And it's the romance story of the daughter with a, a boyfriend and then the mother with someone who she becomes uh, in a relationship with as well. And then there's some kind of complicating factors around the way that the father dies in this accident. Um, this book actually reminded me a little bit of like a kind of along the lines of a book by like a Jodi Picoult, but I think Jodi Picoult is a little bit more into like, she researches a subject very deeply, but kind of this concept of like a family drama um, with a little bit of romance tied in, it was a similar kind of book to that. So if you are a Jodi Picoult fan, you might like this book, Regretting You. I, I thought it was fine. I guess I just didn't feel like it was anything special. Some of the things that I hear about Colleen Hoover is just people are over the moon about her books. And so I, I'm getting the impression that the ones that I was able to find, these are not like the favorites that people really like. So I'm probably gonna read a couple of more just to kind of get a sense of what else this author can do. Um, but I appreciated reading those couple throughout the month. And then the last book that I read is called Once Upon a Wardrobe by Patty Callahan. And uh, this is a book, it kind of reminded me of the, the book that I read last month, which was a, a kind of retelling a part of the story of Anne of Green Gables. This book is um, about C.S. Lewis and his book, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. And I actually read, I took a class on C.S. Lewis when I was an undergrad. And so I've actually read pretty widely in terms of, of what he has done. And then of course I read The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe series when I was a kid. Um, and so this was a really interesting book about basically a, a woman who is in college, she's college age, and she has a younger brother who's eight, nine years old, and he's ill. And this takes place in like the 1950s, 1960s, where it's like kind of a big deal for her to be attending um, the college that she's attending. She is a mathematician and, and is trying to kind of make her way in terms of, of learning math and um, being respected as kind of a woman in that field. And then her brother has, um, it, it's kind of implied that he has some kind of like heart ailment or something like that, which is really causing him to not get enough oxygen and he's ill a lot of the time. And so in this book, he reads The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe and um, she's actually going to school where C.S. Lewis is a faculty member. And he asks her to ask C.S. Lewis questions about The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe and so in this book, she ends up having a series of conversations with C.S. Lewis and his brother, um, and they live together uh, in, in this home. And she goes and visits them and asks questions about the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Um, I think that this is one of those books similar to the one about Anne of Green Gables, Marilla of Avonlea, that, um, or Marilla of Green Gables, I can't remember the title, the one that I read last month. Um, it's similar in that I think it's special if you understand something about The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, or if, or if you have some connection to the work of C.S. Lewis and um, his history and his past. I mean, you're, you're going to, I think, enjoy this book a little bit more. I did enjoy it. I mean, I, I felt, I found it very pleasant. I found it very, um, like, comforting in terms of just like the story of the sister and her brother and how much she cares for him and wants to basically give him comfort because it's clear that he is he's not necessarily gonna live into adulthood. And so she's really trying to help him um, cope with that a little bit through this conversation. And of course, the conversation that she's having with C.S. Lewis and his brother are helping her to cope with the fact that she has a sibling that is ill and that she can't really save from the situation. There's a little bit of a romance in there as well. Um, she has a relationship with someone else that she's going to school with. And so we see that character development happening throughout. Um, but I, I found this to be just a really pleasant read. And especially if you're familiar with The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe and you like that, um, it would be one to consider picking up. So that was again, Once Upon a Wardrobe by Patty Callahan. Those are the 22 books <laughs> that I was able to pick up uh, over the course of February. And I, in some ways don't quite know how I did that because it was only 28 days in the month. And um, definitely by the end, I was binge reading quite a bit to see if I could hit that number. And I, I was able to wrap it up literally the night of February 28th. Um, I'm really looking forward to my March reads. I am going to pick out 22 books to put on my TBR pile for the month to see if I can hit that number again. And you can look out for that video soon. I'll be posting it uh, and you can see the books that I have on my March to be read pile. 
Thanks so much for following along. And if you want to leave any of the books that you read or that you would recommend uh, from your recent reading in the comments below, I'd love to see them.